May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Anyone else here a fan of The Simpsons? Yes. One, I don't know. No, for me. No. I, the, the interchange between Homer and anyone else is fascinating, but she sometimes... Homer and Bart together. Why you little... Anyone else feel like that at times? Yes. Anyone else felt like that even more with random people over the last month while driving? <laughs> with the 20 limit. Why, you, why can't you speed up? Why can't you slow down? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? What idiot thought it was a good idea to change the speed limits? <clears throat> to name but a few ideas that all go through our heads within 30 seconds. Me as much as anyone else. And so I was struck in the epistle today. Paul saying, we always give thanks to God the Father for you. We always give thanks to God the Father for you, says Paul. And we say, why you little? A little bit of a disparity sometimes, isn't it? Is it just over the 20 limit? No, probably not. A few years ago, I was at Greenbelt, the Christian festival up in Kettering kind of way at the time. And Nadia Bowles Weber, a Lutheran pastor from the US was speaking. She's a, she's a fascinating character. It's worth looking her up. But she was speaking about when she gets annoyed on the road or something like that. She doesn't go, why are you little? She just pause and say, dear child of God. If you're annoying me, dear child of God. We always give thanks to God the Father for you, said Paul. So actually Nadia's thought, so dear child of God, when she's getting irritated with someone, seems quite apt. We hear in the first reading, God saying through the prophet, I call you by name, I surname you. I, not only I call you by name, I give you my name, I bring you into my family, says God. I know you, I love you, I have created you, says God. You matter, says God. Each and every one of us inside the church, watching on the live stream and outside the church. Those who are doing 20 in a 50 limit because they think, well, the signs must all be wrong because you should drive 20 at every moment. And those who are driving at way above any speed limit. I was driving on a road recently and the speed limit was 40 for a while and then 20 for a while. The person in front of me was doing 30. 30 in the 40 limit to irritate me in one way, and then 30 in the 20 limit afterwards. Thankfully, when they got across to the head of the Valley's Road, they went the other way to me, because I'm sure they were still doing 30 on the 40 limit all along there. Dear child of God, we always give thanks to God the Father for you, no matter what, even if you're doing silly things like the rest of us do, if only we admit it. In the Gospel reading, the start of it acknowledges that Jesus was being set up. It goes without saying again and again. They're trying to catch him out. They're coming up with things so that no matter what Jesus says, they'll be saying, look, he's dodgy. Don't, look, don't believe him. Look, he's rubbish. <coughs> Jesus knows. And his response acknowledges that. It's almost that they're trying to try and get Jesus to cause an insurrection one way or another with his reply, no matter what, it will upset people. Do you offer the money? Do you pay taxes to the emperor or not? Well, if you do, well, you're selling out to the enemy. If you don't, well, you're causing, right? you're refusing to obey the laws, you're going to cause all kinds of trouble and conflict and everything. 
difficult one for all of us at times. If there seems to be a disparity between the law and what we think maybe our faith says. How do we respond? It's brought home so much at the moment, isn't it? In the Holy Land. Using religion to justify division, using religion to justify, or more than division, to cause violence and death. Earlier this week I had a message from a priest colleague of mine in the US, Father Matthew, who's been involved with the American Friends of the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem, the Anglican Hospital in Gaza. He sent a message to say that it involved 500 odd lives lost. And he sent some words from the director of the hospital. The children thought they would be safe playing in our church playground. And they weren't. And then we hear about the Greek Orthodox Church being bombed. Then just as I walked into church this morning, I had a message from another friend, another priest friend in London, that a fellow trustee colleague of hers for a charity lives in Gaza and has just been killed. It's relentless. It's not just one side, it's both sides. There are no winners, there are only losers. How is it right to justify this violence, this homicide, on any side at all? I call you by name, I surname you, says God in the first reading through the prophet. We always give thanks to God the Father for you, says Paul in the epistle. And instead we see people murdering in the name of religion. How is that right? Early this month we had the Harvest Thanksgiving. And we were reminded that all things come from God. <coughs> and so when we offer up to God, we offer up to God from the things we have received from God. We receive from God and we offer these things back to God. It's not ours by right, it's what we're blessed with by God that we then offer back. Because in the end, all things belong to God. Even life itself comes from God. It is a precious gift from God. I don't know about you, but living in the world is a challenge. <coughs> sometimes, often, or all the time. Working out quite how to respond to anything. Accepting the legitimate laws of our land, even driving at 20 miles an hour. But at the same time, not conforming to the norms of the world. We're in the world, but not of the world, if you like. Because in the end, we're following Jesus even though at the same time we're conforming to the law such as paying taxes. We can't get away with not doing that. I'm reminded of a story that I read some years ago. Someone who had refused to get car insurance because, well, God would protect him from an accident. I'm not sure it quite works like that. Like the person who'd read in the scriptures about being able to tame snakes, so naturally you can see what happened next. We trust God, we receive from God, we offer up to God, but at the same time we're living in this world. We accept the laws of this world while challenging injustice, while challenging things which are wrong while working for change. Because we are looking for building something better. Working to build up God's kingdom here, while acknowledging where we are. This is so hard when we see what's going on around us. What would Jesus do? Do you remember those little 
wristbands back in the 90s and early 2000s, WWJD, what would Jesus do? And so often the response is, think what as well, he'd be quiet, humble, wouldn't say boo to a goose. Not quite the case, was it? What would Jesus do when there was that corruption in the temple? See that table? I'm not going to knock it over, I'll be in trouble. Oh no, I've moved it. I'm going to be in trouble for moving the table now, aren't I? <laughs> no one noticed, did they? What would Jesus do? He would get annoyed at the right times. He would have righteous anger. He would stand up to those things which are wrong. You know, even the Magnificent, Mary's great song of praise after conceiving Jesus was predicting the world being turned upside down through Jesus. New hope, new possibilities, those things that were wrong are righted. The Beatitudes, the norms being turned upside down. The world says if someone annoys you, give them a slap or something. No. Paul says, we always give thanks to God the Father for you. Following Jesus, who preached love salvation, reconciliation to God for all people. We always give thanks to God the Father for you, we hear in the epistle. So when we challenge the wrongs, we're not doing them through violence, we're doing them through love. What can we do to live this? Here in this ministry area, as we work out how to exist in this new world of all the different districts coming together and clergy floating around a little bit and getting to know and love the different communities and you getting to know the weird quirks of some of us or is that just the weird quirks of me? <laughs> Discuss. How do we do this in Wales? Or in the UK or in the world? Showing God's love. Showing God's reconciliation, working for peace and justice and reconciliation rather than war and division. Dear child of God, we love you. That must surely be our response when we get irritated by the 20 limit or other things. Yes, stand up for things which are wrong, but remind ourselves, remind others, that they are made in the image of God, who calls each of us by name, who surnames us. Dear child of God, we love you, this day and always. Amen.